Tomo News presents Good Samaritans. Uh, can I help you? Student lets special needs man hold his hand on the bus. A photo of a college student in Ontario, Canada, who let a stranger with special needs hold his hand on the bus, has since gone viral. Godfrey Kudo was on his way home from a burrito place downtown when he got onto a packed bus and a man sitting close to the front wanted a handshake. He kept holding my hand, Kudo said. I thought I was getting pranked at first, but he just needed comfort. Over the half hour bus ride, Kudo said Robert held his hand, leaned on him, hugged him, and also kissed his hands during the ride. I just allowed it, like what am I gonna do, Kudo said. Sometimes you just have to be selfless and put someone else's need above yours. Someone from Robert's family got in touch with Kudo through Facebook and thanked him for being there for his uncle. They told him Robert suffered from cerebral palsy and was deaf. Woman falls on subway tracks and is saved by fellow passengers. A woman in the Bronx narrowly escaped to death thanks to the heroism of some good Samaritans. On July 19th, around 10.40 a.m., 48-year-old Martina Pamplin was walking with her cane when she somehow fell off the platform. A registered nurse saw the woman fall and instinctively jumped down onto the subway track to help her. But when she went to grab Pamplin, electricity surged through her. Pamplin had fallen on the electrified third rail of the subway, and there was no way to help her. Trap hangers on the platform rushed to get the power turned off. Some tried to call 911, while others prayed. Once the power was turned off, an NYPD officer and two other Good Samaritans carefully hopped onto the subway tracks and were able to lift the unconscious woman to safety. Martina Pamplin was rushed to hospital, and her condition remains unknown. But the fact that she's still alive is a testament to the bravery of those living in New York. Viral video shows NYC man giving homeless man the shirt off his back. We often say something along the lines of, so-and-so is such a kind person, he'd give you the shirt off his back. But it's not often that we see someone actually go so far as to act out that idiom. But a good Samaritan riding New York City's Brooklyn-bound A train did just that Friday night as the temperature plummeted to around a chilly 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Lazaro in Alaska captured the heartwarming exchange between this lifesaver and this homeless man after an Alaska got on the train in Washington Heights. The homeless passenger, who was sitting alone, was shivering and looked sickly, in Alaska told New York Daily News. A man then walks over while taking off the white t-shirt he had on offers it to the half-naked stranger, and even helps him put it on. The man then walks back to his seat and offers his black beanie, which he then also puts onto the stranger. Alaska posted the video to Facebook and it has since racked up more than 8 million views. New York City gets a bad rep for being a city with not exactly the nicest people, but stories like these show good Samaritans definitely do dwell there. German student is killed after defending girls from harassment. Vigils were staged across Germany to commemorate Tujel Bayrak, a 22-year-old woman who was killed after stopping a group of men from sexually harassing two teenage girls at a fast food restaurant in mid-November. Tujel Bayrak heard someone screaming for help at a McDonald's in Offenbach, a city near Frankfurt. She headed to the toilet and confronted a group of men who were harassing two teenage girls. Surveillance footage obtained by German newspaper Bild shows that Albayrak's attacker, identified as Senel M, went to the car park. In an agitated state, Senel M left the car park and returned shortly to beat Albayrak's head with a bat. His friend failed to stop him. The young woman fell to the ground after the beating. Albayrak's parents agreed to turn off their daughter's life support last Friday, which was her birthday. Albayrak's killer, reportedly an 18-year-old Serbian man, is now in police custody. Good Samaritan jumps off bridge as car almost hits him. 
A good Samaritan was forced to jump off a bridge while trying to direct traffic following a hit-and-run accident early Friday morning. A Pontiac sedan was pushed into the guardrail in a hit-and-run accident on Interstate 95 while crossing the Savannah River. Two men from a truck stopped to help direct traffic. But a driver heading southbound on the bridge didn't see the men and came close to hitting one of them, forcing one man to jump off the bridge. A fall estimated at between 75 and 100 feet. The man swam to shore and was treated for minor injuries on the riverbank after medics lowered a first aid kit down from the bridge. Police are now looking for a white Chevy Avalanche truck which was involved in the hit and run accident. The driver in the Pontiac sedan said his wife and three-year-old daughter were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Team of angry New Yorkers teach a mugger a little lesson in teamwork. With New York crime rates reportedly on the rise, some locals have had enough. This mugger got to experience the public's frustration firsthand when he tried a brazen daylight bag grab. New York police say suspect Theodore Sheeran attempted to snatch a woman's backpack in broad daylight in downtown Manhattan on Wednesday. The suspect allegedly punched the woman, a tourist visiting the city from Arizona, and dragged her along the street before she fell to the ground. The contents of the victim's backpack spilled across the sidewalk, and the suspect snatched a wad of the woman's cash and tried to flee. A 25-year-old man identified as Dion Frank told the New York Post he heard the woman scream, saw the mugger, and went after him. Frank was soon joined by others, and this posse of good Samaritans pinned the suspect to the ground, ordered him to return the cash, and called the police. Here's the full video of the incident. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, there you go. There you go. Come on, there you go. That's it. Where are you? Where's the money at? Where's the money at? Yo, do you get everything? Yeah, I got You got everything? Everything. Are you? While the suspect did manage to escape from the posse, cops picked him up just two blocks later. The 34-year-old suspect, who allegedly has a long criminal history, was charged with robbery and other offenses. Some of those who witnessed the incident posted glowing reports about what happened that day, praising the unity of those who came together to subdue the suspect and assist the victim. What do you think? Would you have joined the posse, or is subduing criminal suspects better left to the police? Hero records himself rescuing man from street racing crash. Santiago Portillo was just filming this fiery car crash when he discovered a survivor in the accident. He immediately jumped into action, but he made sure every single second of his heroism was recorded. The crash that happened on Indiana Avenue near Tyler Street in Riverside, California was allegedly caused by street racing. Oh, bro, you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. Stay right there! The driver suffered injuries to his head and his leg. Police said he could face charges if the investigation shows he was indeed street racing. Man dies after protecting child at Hollywood McDonald's. Gabriel Alvarez Ortega Jr. was assaulted at this McDonald's at Vine and Sunset in Hollywood, Los Angeles on June 18th and died from his injuries on July 14th. The 57-year-old man was in the McDonald's minding his own business on the evening of June 18th. A man in the restaurant started yelling at a child and walking toward him with fists clenched. The man is described as African-American between 30 and 40 years old. Witnesses do not believe he had a prior relationship with the child. Ortega, believing an attack was imminent, jumped in front of the child and acted as a shield, telling the man to leave the child alone. The man responded by walking up to Ortega and punching him before fleeing from the fast food chain. Ortega initially refused medical treatment. He checked into a hospital three days after the incident but still succumbed to his injuries on July 14th. The coroner's report on July 23rd confirmed Ortega died from blunt force trauma. The assailant is still on the loose and police are seeking tips about the case. Woman rescued after she drives her car into a pond. Three Good Samaritans sprang into action when they saw a woman accidentally drive her SUV into a pond on Friday afternoon. 68-year-old Helen Joyce was parking her Ford Edge on a roundabout in Arlington, Massachusetts when she jumped the curb and drove into a pond. 
Luckily, Dan Frazier and Kenneth Chapman were cycling nearby and saw what happened, as did Cesar Perozo. Perozo reached the sinking vehicle first and told Joyce to exit through the back door. A bystander recorded this video of the incident. Water rushed in as soon as the back door was opened, causing the SUV to sink further into the water. Unable to find Joyce, Perozo feared for the worst. But she miraculously resurfaced and was fully conscious. Frazier and Chapman pulled her from the water. She was taken to a local hospital and treated for mild hypothermia. Arlington Police Chief Frederick Ryan said Joyce will not face criminal charges, but her ability to drive safely will be reviewed. Former Marine fatally shot trying to make a citizen's arrest. A former Marine with a gun was killed when he tried to make a citizen's arrest of a soldier who had just shot his girlfriend. Police said Ricky Braddon went to a Walgreens in Arlington, Texas, where his wife was working on Monday morning, and got into an argument with her in the parking lot. Braddon then shot his wife in the leg. Anthony Antel Jr. witnessed the shooting. He went to his car to get his gun and tried to intervene. As Braddon attempted to leave the scene in his car, Antel tried to stop him and pointed his gun at Braddon. Braddon then got out of his car, slapped Antel's gun out of his hand, and shot him dead. Braddon fled the scene, but later turned himself into police. Police said they are unsure if Antel was able to fire his own gun. Antel's wife was also at the scene and witnessed the tragic shooting. Man wearing a Native American headdress stops gunmen on a train. A good Samaritan helped disarm a gun-wielding teenager on the Portland Max train while rocking a Native American headdress. The teen shooter was on the train Tuesday night when he was confronted by a man he knew about missing money. During the argument, the teen took out a gun. He fired two shots, which luckily didn't hit his intended victim or anyone else. As the train approached 102nd Avenue Station, Rambo Richardson saw the scuffle inside and decided to help. The victim was already doing a pretty good job holding the shooter down, managing to get him in a headlock. By the time Richardson got there, all he had to do was grab the gun and hold it till the cops arrived. Local media quickly declared him a hero, though he points out he doesn't deserve full credit as it was a team effort between him and the shooter's victim. All in a day's work for Chief Rambo. Elderly driver survives ocean plunge. An 85-year-old woman had a miraculous escape when she drove her car into the sea. Members of the emergency services and some good Samaritans sprang into action when Marie Fitzgerald sank into the water. Witnesses said Fitzgerald appeared to be parking her car last Thursday at Eastern Point Beach in Groton, Connecticut. But instead, she sped up and crashed through a walkway railing, bouncing off rocks and into the ocean. One passerby tried to help by smashing her windshield with a piece of broken barrier but that only made things worse. She's got to be able to climb out the front. Oh my God. Luckily, it didn't take long for police and firefighters to arrive on the scene and quickly wade into the water. Using an axe, a police officer smashed the passenger window, opened the door, and dragged Fitzgerald to safety. The rescue came not a moment too soon, as water covered Fitzgerald's entire body, except her chin, mouth, and nose. The 85-year-old remained conscious throughout the ordeal. She is reportedly doing fine at home after her exciting day out at the beach. Newborn baby girls saved by Good Samaritan. In Taiwan, an emergency room nurse is being hailed by two parents as their baby's guardian angel after she stopped to help their seven-month-old baby girl. Mr. and Mrs. Tu were feeding their seven-month baby when she suddenly began choking. She was struggling to breathe and went into shock. The frantic parents phoned for an ambulance to be sent and rushed downstairs, the father still barefoot, to wait in the street for the emergency crew to arrive. Little did they know that an off-duty nurse would pass by on her scooter. 
Nurse Chen, age 37, saw the panicked couple and immediately realized that the baby was limp and unconscious. Nurse Chen stopped, told the couple she was a nurse, and began to attempt to resuscitate the baby. She boarded the ambulance with the baby and continued her efforts until they reached the hospital. By the time the ambulance reached the hospital, the baby girl was breathing again, but still unconscious. Doctors were able to stabilize her, and she is still being kept in the intensive care under observation. Nurse Chen said she couldn't have just continued driving on, knowing she had the skills to help the young family. Mr. Tu said he and his wife would always be thankful to Nurse Chen. He said he would also teach his daughter to respect and be thankful to Nurse Chen when she was old enough to understand how close she came to dying without the Good Samaritan's help.